Okay, welcome to the great distribution tool debate video log number one. Firstly, welcome to everyone uh, who's watching these videos and following along, and a big thanks to everyone who contributed some money towards this study. Uh, it has been really humbling and really overwhelming how many people just threw money at this um, with such a, a small introduction, and uh, we're really grateful for the trust and uh, the first thing that Michael, Michelle and I always talk about is uh, how do we ensure that we're sending value back to everyone who contributed um, and also how are we going to uh, produce accurate, meaningful, um, honest results with this study. So I'm going to be doing a few of these video logs as we move along to try and share what we're thinking and try to solicit some feedback from that group that contributed. Again, thank you. Um, and as we move along, hopefully we can get this done pretty quickly and efficiently. Um, thanks also to Sasha Sestik of Owner Coffee, who has already gracefully offered uh, an OCD tool version two uh, for us to test with, and he's gonna send us a bunch of instructions as well. So thank you, Sasha. We really appreciate that because it helps us um, put money into other things like time and testing equipment. So um, at the moment we have almost uh, 700, I think it was about seven, 800 USD uh, in the bank, which is definitely enough for us to begin testing. So it's not much. Uh, we're not going to be able to do weeks of studies. Uh, so we need to be very efficient with how we do this. Uh, efficiency is the goal. We do not have the funding of a university or a big lab. So I guess the first question is, number one, what to test? And... Uh, this is a point of contention among a lot of people because a lot of um, the manufacturers of tools claim different things. A lot of people say that they're using tools uh, to achieve different things as well. So firstly, we need to decide what is optimal uh, for a distribution tool. What are they actually trying to do? And I would posit that a distribution tool is aiming to uh, place an even amount of coffee grinds uh, throughout the basket. That is, there are no areas of less density or higher density. Um, I'm going to probably use the term density a lot because it's a lot easier to talk about. So uh, we're aiming for an even density of coffee grinds throughout the basket, which would then promote and enable a uniform flow of water through the basket. I don't think that's too much of a stretch to say that uh, that's what a distribution tool should do. Uh, now, secondly, if a distribution tool can achieve an even density of grinds throughout the basket, it should also be able to do that consistently. And I think this is almost as important as the first half uh, of what is optimal. Because if a distribution tool can't do this consistently or across multiple staff members, then there's no point using the tool because it's actually not doing what it's supposed to do all the time. So I think uh, even density of grinds consistently across a multitude of conditions is probably uh, the test that we're going to try and uh, run. So the second question here, obviously to all of you who have contributed, if you have a problem with this, please uh, start chatting in the forum below this video uh, because we'd love to know if there are in fact other things that distribution tools should do. Uh, so second is how do we test this? And uh, this is an even bigger point of contention uh, amongst people. So. I don't think we have enough money for a taste study uh, because we just don't have the number of humans uh, or uh, the amount of time or money that it takes to run a proper subjective study, uh, subjective taste analysis. I also don't think that we should be using refractometers because there is a, uh, quite a large uh, portion of the coffee community who thinks that refractometers won't tell us what we need, even though I would cry uh, and yell till I'm red in the face. Otherwise, we're not going to use refractometers. Um, we need to do something that is very empirical. We need to create a test that uh, only measures the distribution of grinds because anything beyond the distribution of grinds, um, so brewing or beyond brewing, is going to have a multitude of other variables that we cannot control uh, with this small study. So uh, what we propose is divvying up the grinds in the basket after a distribution tool has been used, uh, potentially after we've also tamped. So uh, distribution tool, 
into the basket, spin it around or whatever the method is, and then tamp consistently. So we might use a puck press or something like that. Um, and then I want to use a tool, or, or we're thinking of using a tool uh, like this in the bottom right here, you'll see a little video. So this is something I just quickly drew up in CAD and it's kind of like a big pizza slicer. And uh, the way that this would work is we would uh, use the distribution tool uh, and then, where's my laser pointer? Uh, use the distribution tool and then push it into the basket all the way down to the bottom. So those blades that you see would divide the coffee into six equal segments. And then we would tip the basket upside down, um, which would then pour the coffee into this tool. And we would then uh, get rid of the coffee. So we would uh, remove the coffee from each of those six segments and weigh the tool each time. So then we would have a very empirical measurement of whether the distribution tool has pushed coffee into six segments of the basket um, in an even way. So if they weigh the same, then it's arguable that the density of coffee is the same. Now obviously this test doesn't cover the uh, vertical distribution. So there might have been you know, more, dense, more density at the top, less density at the bottom, vice versa. We're only using a vertical um, uh, section of the grinds. So uh, I think we need to do just one test like this at the beginning because it's easy. Um, and then we can see if, if there is a, a big discrepancy between these six slices of the pizza, that's it. We know that a distribution tool isn't evenly pushing coffee around the basket and we don't need to do another test. Instead, we would need to figure out how to make a distribution tool achieve this. So um, I think this is the quickest, uh, easiest, cheapest. I can whip it up in my 3D printer, get some stainless steel bar, take it to a knife shop, get them to sharpen it, insert it into the um, tool. We can, we can get this done in a couple of hours rather than days and days and days. Um, and I think, it's, I think this would be the fastest, uh, easiest way for us to determine whether distribution tools are indeed distributing coffee to all sections of the basket. Uh, and obviously if it comes back even and all of the sections are the same, then we could move on to a test that uses uh, horizontal sectioning of the basket to see if there's a difference there as well. So uh, obviously feedback is welcome uh, for everyone who has contributed. You're already invited uh, to the science uh, subsection of the Barista Hustle Forum. And you're welcome to comment um, underneath uh, our various posts and we'll be in there talking and um, getting feedback and listening to you all. And if there's anyone uh, who's watching this thinking I'd like to be involved in something like that, then there should be a link below this video uh, that will take you to the page for contributors to um, throw some money into this test and help us move it along um, and push it further along so that we can continue to test things, um, test more tools, test different techniques um, and be more thorough. Essentially, the more money we get, the more thorough we can be uh, and the deeper we can go into these tests. So uh, if you're watching and want to be involved, please follow that link, throw in anything from five, to 20 to $50 um, and we'd be very grateful. So uh, I'm looking forward to talking to all of our uh, backers down in the comments and uh, until next time, uh, this is Matt of Brewster Hustle signing off.